Alrighty, so now that we have the ladders done, in fact, we have almost all the mechanics done at this point. For our character, I wanted to add a health item in really quick so we can do that. There is a heart model in here, so let's grab the heart and drop it into the scene. And we'll scale it up to be roughly the size of the coin. I'm going to switch it from metallic to the non-metallic. I just kind of like the way that looks a little bit better. We're going to set this to actor and ghost, collision bounds, and then we're going to go over to logic bricks. So I'm going to click on the heart and then I'm going to click on the key. That way I can F3 and copy logic bricks to selected. We're pretty much going to use the same logic as the key and the coin. So if we press play, you can see that the heart is now spinning just the way I want it to. So what we're going to change on the heart is the message from add key. We want to change this to keel and we're just going to make this a general message. If you leave the two section blank, it will just go out to the world. So we're going to go to the logic brick section, click on the player. And the reason we're doing this is because the logic nodes don't really have a good way of receiving messages. So let's click on the player and we're going to add a message. This message is going to be heal. We're going to add a property actuator and set it to add. We want to add one to the HP. So if we press play and we jump in the water and we lose a health bubble, if we go and collect the heart, our HP goes up. So currently in the way that it is, every time we collect a heart, it's going to be adding one. So your player will have 20 HP at some point and only have three heart containers. So we're going to cap our HP. So we can do that through logic bricks or logic nodes. Because all we have to do is add a property. And we're going to say if this property is greater than, and we'll say HP. If HP is greater than three, then we're going to add another property. Connect these together. We're going to use assign, and we're going to assign HP to three. So if we collect more heart containers than we can hold, it will just assign it to our max health. So we can check this by going to our properties, find the HP property and click this little eye icon to show it in our debug. We can see the player debug HP is at three. If we collect the heart container, we are at three HP still. So if we press play again and we jump in the water and then grab the heart container, so we lose health, we're at two and we're at three. So that's how you cap your HP. You can go one step further and say if the player is at full health, they cannot pick up the heart container. That way they're not wasting a heart container. What we can do is click on the heart container in the logic bricks, add in a new always, set the tick icon so that we are checking every frame. We'll add a property, set this property to copy, and then connect these two together. What we're gonna do is copy the HP property from the player. So we wanna grab player, HP, and then add a new game property to the heart. We're gonna call this max HP, and this can be an integer. Now go to the property, select max HP. So we are grabbing the property of the heart, which is the max HP and copying from the player's HP. Then what we can do, we can minimize these so they're not in the way anymore. We'll add a new property. The max HP is less than three. Then we can pick up the heart container. So if we press play and walk into the heart container now, we cannot pick it up. But if we go over to the water, jump in, we have lost HP and we can pick up the heart container. So that's how you do a cap on your HP so that you cannot pick up items that the player doesn't have room for. All right, now that we have a fully working health system, let's add some enemies to the game. So we can pick up our stuff and we got health. Let's add some enemies. We have this little B model. So if we go to our layout, just add a B into the scene like so. Uh, we'll scale it up, make it nice and good size. That is a honking B. <laughs> let's bring this B up like so. Let's move this B right over the bridge and make it just a little bit higher. Rotate the B 90 degrees. I am not looking to make a very advanced AI system. In fact, I'm probably just going to keep this tutorial series kind of in the Mario realm. Pretty simple AI. We're just going to have the B go from one side to the other and kind of just follow a track, making the monsters basically part of the obstacles. We are going to be getting into some tracking. We have a cannon model that I would like to add some basically follow the player and it'll shoot cannonballs. I'm going to select the B and I'm going to add in a empty. This could be a plain access empty and I'm going to make a new collection with the empty selected, make a new collection and call it B. Now I'm going to rename this to B point. So basically what I want to happen is the B is going to go is going to fly to each one of these empties. Once it gets to one empty, it will track to the other empty. So let's go over to the animation tab, select the B, and let's add a new bow. 
In the bone properties, we'll go to viewport display and set it to in front. Set it to be about the length of the B. That way the weight painting works right. Select the B and then select the bone, control P, and we're just gonna do bone. Now, if we grab the bone, we can move the B around. Going down to the dope sheet, select dope sheet and set it to action editor. If we press control and tab, we can go into pose mode and we can add a keyframe. Set the frame to frame zero and press I. We're going to be adding a location and rotation keyframe. In order to make this easier, go down to King and then select location and rotation. That way when we press I, it'll automatically add that keyframe. So when the B is moving, we want it to kind of just do a little bit of a flutter. So it's going to go up a little bit and then fall down since that's what bees do. <laughs> Let's do a little bit of a tilt, press I, then go to frame 12 and add another keyframe. This will be our loop. At frame six, what we'll do is bring the B up about two, and we'll tilt the B up a little bit as well. That way it kind of gets this little bit of a whoop. <laughs> I think this is gonna be a little bit too fast, so I'll just move, so move the end keyframe to frame 24, and move this to 12. And then as it's going up frame six, then we can tilt up. There we go. And to see this loop a little bit better, just go down here and type in 24 for the end frame. And when we press play, we can see our animation loop. Now that we have our animations done, let's go into the logic bricks, select the B and add a cube. So this is going to be our B's hitbox. Select the B again and go to the physics properties and make sure it's on no collision. Select the armature of the B and then parent it to the new cube. And then we'll go to the object properties and go into viewport display and wire. Let's go into the hitbox physics properties, go collision bounds, actor, and ghost. Because we don't want the B to interact with the player. Select the first empty and call it point, and select the other empty and call it point two. With the first empty selected, go to the physics properties and set it to dynamic, and then check the lock translation. Now do the same thing for the second empty. Dynamic, and actor, ghost, and lock the translation, make sure box collision's on. Now let's give our bees hitbox a new property and we'll call this point. And we're gonna make this a integer. Now add two properties. First property, just put one. So when the point is equal to one, the B will go towards the first empty. And for the second one, point equals two, then we'll go to the second empty. So we need to add two edit objects and two motions. Just stagger them to make them look a little bit nicer. And then for point one, connect that to the first edit object and to the first motion. With the edit object, select add object and switch it over to track two and select the first empty. The B is facing on the minus direction of the X axis. So we'll do that. Let's play test to see if it's working. So nothing's happening. And that's because we need to go over to our property and set it to one. So press play and you can see that it is definitely not rotating on the proper axis. Switch the track axis to the negative X axis. The B is now in the, facing the right direction. And let's hook up the second point. So connect those in, switch it over to track two, and we'll select our second empty. Set it to negative X, and you can adjust the speed of your enemy to what you like the best. So I'm gonna set mine to point two just to make it a little bit faster. Now we need to actually set the property. Set it to one, so it'll go to the first point, And we'll say when collision with point one, then property, and we'll assign point to two. Do the same thing again, so collision, point two, and then another property, connect the together, then assign point to one. Now that we have those set, click on the first empty and give it a new property called point one, and the second empty is gonna be called point two on the property. We press play now, and the B collides with that, you can see the B is now gonna bounce between our points. If you like it to snap back and forth, that's fine. But if we go and click on our B again, we can go to the track axis and where it says time, I'm gonna set this to six. This will let it rotate smoothly to the next point. So apply both at six and then press play. So when it gets to that point, it will smoothly turn around and go to its next point. This is totally choice. I just like it to be a little bit smoother. Now we want the B to damage the player, so add a game property and call this property DMG for damage. And I like to do it in all caps. Like so you don't have to change anything else because we're just using it as a marker. 
So when the player collides with DMG, then we're just going to modify the property and subtract one from our health. And if we collide with it, we take some damage. Now that we have the bee mechanics, let's give it a little bit of animation. With the bee's bone selected, go to the logic bricks again and add an always and an action. Connect those together and select the bee action. 24 frames, frame one, and set it to loop stop. So when we press play, our bee has a little animation. <laughs> that is so cute. Oh my goodness, I love it. But let's also make it so the wings flap. If we go over to our shape keys, you can see that this already has a shape key attached to it. So let's just add a little animation. Frame one, we'll just do value of zero. And then we'll go to frame four. We'll do a little flap. Then frame eight. And then go back to normal. Then we can just, with all the keyframes selected, shift D and do it all the way across to 24 frames. So our bee now has a nice little flap. One way you can name your shape key animation is go to the bee and then go to the armature. Underneath the armature, go to the bee model, sphere, key, and then animation. And then here is the animation name. You can rename this to bee animation or bee wings. That way, when we click on our bee and we add a always, We'll add another always, an action, connect those two together. When we go in here, B wings will be easy to find and we can say 24 frames, frame one, and we'll set it to loop stop. So when we press play again, oh my goodness, we got a little bee flying around. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it. All right, I can even put that in the shade mode and we can see our little, we can see our work go. All right, since we have our B in this B collection, let's click on the B collection, right click on the B collection, visibility, and then hide all. Select the place you wanna put your B, and we'll put our B here, drag it up, like so, just above the railing. Then we can press play, and we have a B. Let's duplicate this guy a couple of times, give him a few friends. Then I'm going to rotate this one 180 degrees. Now we have a little bit of an obstacle course between these bees. <laughs> oh, we can go to our player, collect our key and our coin, go up the ladder, and try to dodge the bees. 